Magandang araw sa lahat. I'm Lawrence Go, the Data Lead for the Data Driven Development Program of Action for Economic Reforms. Pagkatapos nating matutunan ang kaibahan ng data at information, ngayon naman pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng data driven development sa konteksto ng local governance sa ating mga community. So for today, our discussion will focus on four main points. First, defining data-driven development. Ano nga po ba ang ibig sabihin ng data-driven development? In the ideal world, paano ba natin i-operationalize ang data-driven development o 3D sa local governance? Second, mag-share po ako ng example kung saan ginamit ang data para ma-achieve ang ating goal ng development. Third, dahil sa realities on the ground, meron pong constraint sa pag-implement ng 3D o data-driven development. Ano pong gaps ang nakikita natin base sa iba't ibang LGU sa Philippines? And last, knowing the gaps and the shortcomings, paano natin tutugunan ang mga pagkukulang para ma-implement ang 3D sa ating communities at local government? Before we define 3D, I'd like to share with you a quote na simula ngayon sana ay isa puso at isa isip natin. Data poverty makes it hard to solve real poverty. Ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag may kakulangan ng data, hindi natin masusolusyonan o mahihirapan tayong masolusyonan ang poverty o kahirapan. In this lecture, I hope to explain why I believe that data poverty makes it hard to solve real poverty. So let's start. Ano nga ba itong 3D na paulit-ulit natin sinasabi? Kung tutuusin, napakasimple lang po ng idea na to. When we use data to make decisions, when we use facts and evidence to craft policies and programs, we are already promoting and advocating for data-driven development. Basically, ginagamit po natin ang data at iba pang objective evidence para ma-inform ang mga decisions at programa sa ating communities. But how does this differ from current practice? 3D is not about making decisions based on intuition o yung sinasabing feel ko lang, observation or assumption o yung tingin ko, outdated practices o yung nakasanayan, at hindi rin ito based sa subjective biases or anecdotes o yung sabi-sabi, kwento o chismis. And now, I'd like to share with you the three principles of 3D. First, 3D is people-centered. Ang ibig sabihin nito, whatever data we use comes from the people and whatever data we use should be used for the people or for their development. Second, data is a means to an end. We collect data not for the sake of having or storing data, but for the purpose of being able to use such data to create policies that will impact people's development. Kailangan nating tandaan na data on its own is useless. Data becomes useful when we're able to use it for people's development. And last, 3D is about creating evidence-based policies. Sa halip na manguhula tayo o sa halip na aasa sa anecdote, sa sabi-sabi o sa mga opinion, now we will be using data as the foundation for our policies. After discussing what data-driven development or 3D is all about, Ngayon naman, we'd like to ask the question, how does data drive development? Dahil sinasabi nating data-driven development, nagsisimula ang lahat sa data. Sa naunang module, napag-usapan natin kung ano ang data. In the context of local government, different data processes are involved. Una po, kailangan nating mangolekta ng data. Pangalawa, kailangan natin store ng maayos ang data at bigyan ng access ang iba't ibang stakeholders para magamit ang data. Pangatlo, kailangan natin ng data analytics para matransform ang raw data into information. 
And so we need to make sense of data and turn them into insights for policy change. But data-driven development doesn't stop at data. It is not just collecting data for data's sake. It is a means to craft policies to enact change. After data, we move forward to policy, whether through public programs or ordinances. Data-driven development means that we create programs based on data and evidence, or what we call evidence-based policymaking. We use the insights that we learn from data to think of the best programs and policies for our local communities. And through this, we promote human development because data reflects our community's priorities and development issues, and our policies are based on such data, then we can expect that this will lead to better outcomes for all. But it doesn't end there. We need a feedback mechanism through constant monitoring and evaluation to tell us which policies work. And this brings us back to data again. Data-driven development starts from data and culminates in development for all. After showing the 3D framework or how data drives development, now I'd like to share with you how to apply 3D in your local communities. You can think of 3D in action as a machine which will only work if all the gears work. Pag may isang piyesang hindi gumagana, hindi gagana ang buong makina. To simplify the data-driven development framework, we can break down the process into four. Parang sa pagluluto lang. First, problem or goal. What is the problem that needs to be solved and what is our goal or our target? So kung sa pagluluto, ano ba ang gusto nating lutuin? At ano ba ang gustong kainin ng ating mga customer? Second, sa data, what tools do we need to solve our problems and achieve our goals? And what tools do we have? And how can we bridge the gap? Finally, what does the data tell us? So kung sa pagluluto, anong sangkap ang meron natin at anong sangkap ang kulang pa? Maganda ba ang kalidad ng sangkap? Sariwa ba? Kasi minsan, kung hindi maganda, kahit anong luto mo, ang labas hindi rin masarap. Ganun din sa data. High quality data is needed to produce high quality policies. And third, policy. How do we implement what the data and evidence tell us? Basically, parang itong pagsunod sa recipe. Ang data ang magsasabi kung paano at ano ang i-implement natin na polisiya. And last, result. What are the effects of the policy? Did it work? Why and why not? Kumbaga sa pagluluto, masarap ba ang ating niluto? Matabang ba o maalat? At kailangan ba nating dagdagan ng asin? So 3D in action is about this simple process. First, identifying the problem and the goal. Second, identifying what the data needs are and what we have. Third, what policies we need to be implementing based on the data. And lastly, evaluating and monitoring the results of our policy. And now, I'd like to share with you 3D in action, a specific example of how we see data-driven development. And if we want to look for examples of 3D, we don't need to go far. In the Philippines, there are many examples. And today, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite stories of how they use data to solve a real problem. So, how did big data defeat dengue? Following the 3D framework, we first identify the problem. So back in 2015, Pangasinan experienced rising cases of dengue to around 2,940 cases from the first to the third quarter. Second, data. So true to data-driven development, one Pangasinan resident concerned about this requested for data from DOH on dengue cases in the province. Luckily, data was available and DOH gave him the data containing 81,000 rows from the past 
three years. So, ano ang ginawa nila? Anong policy and ano ang nangyari? First, the data contained the dates of the cases and he was able to identify when the dengue cases were most common. Basically, this happened during rainy season between August and November. Second, the data contained location of the cases and he was able to identify where uh, the ground zero was. Basically, 30% of the cases came from one small district in the Guban City or Banuan District and there was one barangay that was number one in cases in all three years of the data and this was identified as the ground zero. The data contained the age of the cases and he found out that dengue was prevalent among 5 to 15 year old children which were most likely to be school children. And fourth, using a scientific fact, they know that the dengue mosquito bites after sunrise and before sunset, so they would have been bitten while in school. Next, he looked for schools with stagnant pools of water using Google Maps and found Lomboy Elementary School and Bonoan Bokig National High School. Next, he posted on Facebook his findings. And luckily, he got the attention not just of a concerned citizen, but the attention also of Professor Nicanor Melesho of the Dagupan LGU and Wesley Rosario, the director of BFAR. Together, they thought of the right policy. First, Professor Melesho tested the water and confirmed that they were infested with kitty kitty or the eggs of the dengue mosquito. Second, BIFAR director Rosario helped release mosquito fish to eat the eggs of the dengue mosquito. And the result? No reports of new cases. They knew this because they continued to collect data even after to know whether their policy intervention worked. What happened next is that they replicated this to other barangays. However, why did everything work out? One, data was available. He used his connections to access data and there were open partnerships with the different stakeholders, the LGU, the academe, and the general citizenry. So far, I've shown an example where data-driven development was implemented well. But in reality, we know that in the Philippines, many LGUs struggle to fully and truly implement 3D for different reasons and different constraints. In the next few slides, I will show results of our survey from 14 LGUs around the country about their constraints in implementing 3D. Ideally, we want to see 3D in action. However, in reality, that's not the case. So what are the common constraints that LGUs are facing? The first constraint is KSD or kulang sa data. Not all datasets are available, and even those that are available are mostly paper-based or collected at long intervals for around every month, a quarter, or a year, or more. Second, data are generally collected only before implementation and not after, and so we don't know what the effects are of particular policies. Second is what we call KKD or kanya-kanyang data. Basically, data is not shared internally or externally. What this means is that internally, different departments within the LGU don't get to access other departments' data. And externally, stakeholders are not able to access the data, which is mostly available only upon request. And there are hoops that people have to go through to actually access the data. The third is about the lack of political will and the presence of political walls. Basically, there is a lack of policies on data collection, storage, security, quality, and sharing, 
and also importantly, generally there is no budget for data. And now that we know the gaps in 3D, how can we address them? First, to respond to kulang sa data, we believe in digitalizing processes and investing in technology to improve data collection. Of course, we also subscribe to the belief that the more, the merrier, because we don't know when data might come in handy, as exemplified by the example that I shared with you earlier. Second, uh, to address kanya-kanyang data, we also recommend centralizing data sets. And of course, the belief of sharing is caring, whether internally within the LGU or externally uh, with different stakeholders such as the academe and the public. And finally, to break down political walls, we believe that if there's political will, there's a way to institutionalize data practices and to build the culture of data appreciation through the drafting of data-related policies as well as a specific budget appropriation for data. And later in the workshop or exercise, because you are the experts here, we'd love to hear how you can address these gaps and which gaps you want to be addressed. And to summarize our discussion today, 3D is all about identifying a development issue using data processes in order to craft policies for human development. And again, the three principles of 3D is being people-centered, where the data comes from the people and is used for the development of the people, and that data is only a means to an end. We use data not for the sake of data, but for the sake of development. And lastly, we use data to create policies that are based on evidence. And now I'd like to end with our formula for data-driven development or 3D. Only with good data can we have better policies which can shape and transform Filipino lives to the best that they can be. What is our role in making this happen? Thank you for listening and I hope you learned a lot in this lecture.